Hello, welcome to this ramshackle cheap show, Paul Gannon's Gubbins Collection section of the show. Uh, first of all, you know, I'm in my, I guess I can call it studio, but basically it's just where we store all our boxes in my house. So there you go. <laughs> uh, welcome to this. Um, let's have a little look around. Apologies, I look a right state. Hello, welcome to uh, uh, this cheap show impromptu rummage through my bins basically. Uh, hello to Porsche Puppy, hello to Gog's Eye, hello to Lord... I'm not going to pronounce that correctly, am I? All hell big Papa Hamster, that ain't out. Ain't so, uh, I thought, because last week I or last week or so I did a video uh, with regards to some crap I found in a box which I've not opened since my teens, uh, I'd do another box. And because I'm feeling ghostbustery today, I thought I would do a Ghostbusters themed uh, collection of the tat and toys that I have. Let me just start with this. Here we go. Oh, look at that. That was a very lovely gift uh, given to me. Uh, oh, I just adore this so much. You've got to learn from me, me that I am Ghostbusters mad and I love all things Ghostbusters. Yes, all things Ghostbusters. And I adore this. Uh, firehouse so much. Look, there's Egon and there's Holtzman having a chat with Ray next to the pool table. Let's go down a level and look, there's, um, it's Abby. I want to say Abby. <laughs> uh, with Lewis and Winston, there we go. A library ghost hanging out reading one of her tomes. Uh, there's Patty. And the, anyway, you know the characters. There's Janine, there's um, Kevin, there's Peter. Uh, all, all things Ghostbusters. I love it. I love the universe. Oh, I love it. And look. Da, 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 da. Ecto-1 classic. Uh, and there's Ecto-1 modern, I guess you can call it anyway. And just to prove the effort I'm making today, look at what I'm wearing Basically, it's pyjamas, but there's my Ghostbusters Stay Puft Marshmallow Man t-shirt. And look, ooh, my Ghostbusters um, leg pants. <laughs> so, with that in mind, uh, I've gone through some of the boxes that I've found. And we're just going to have a little look at some of the Ghostbusters tat that I've accumulated over the <coughs> years of my life. Get your wang out. No one wants to see that. I'm looking for tat. Not pornography. So, um, here we go. Let's have a little look at what we've got. So, let's start with this box as it's on the top. So, we're going to start off with this. There we go. It's my Ghostbusters Proton Pack. A little bit dusty. You know, a little bit dusty. Uh, Kenner toy. Came out in 1986 alongside the cartoon series. You know, it's very small. Very wee. But, you know, still in good nick. I'm surprised the stickers are uh, uh, still on, frankly. Still on. So that's a boon. Also, it comes with the gun. I'm not a complete idiot. It's not attached because I'm trying to keep this in storage, but there you go and look. Just like in the movie. We all remember the movie. I long since lost the big yellow foam wand on that. So that's now uh, gone into history, or more accurately, a bin somewhere. Although saying that, my mum's probably got it in that box in the attic. Oh, I wore this every Halloween when I was a kid. Every single sodding Halloween. Um, no imagination. I always wanted to be a Ghostbuster growing up, and I got the chance to. Uh, it does have a few peripherals as well. Uh, here are the Ecto goggles. Uh, no, big yellow foam wand is not a euphemism. Um, <laughs> but this came with a little squeezy gun that fired out little yellow foam balls oh dear it's getting quite porny but the the gun was crap and i just kept the goggles to you know keep up with the uh with the whole kit you know i wanted it all i wanted the goggles the gun i wanted the proton pack um and this oh baby oh it's my ghostbusters trap oh how i love my ghostbusters trap so much because that glows up in the dark i know special feature and look when you press the little the little a foot pedal oh and you can put a little ghost on there and it will throw it up into the air and then catch it in its claws that does nothing you couldn't even ha this is the thing I don't think you could even hang it off the proton pack if you wanted to could you? no it's got wheels just like the movie so anyway 
I adored all that stuff. Uh, what else have I got in my box? Oh, okay. Now, this got damaged very recently and broke my heart. Uh, can we see your tummy trumpet? It's more of a, it's more of a, a, a tummy whistle, I think, if I'm being honest. Oh, it's my PKE meter. It got damaged in transit and the little antenna broke. It broke my heart. But as you can see, it's a class three uh, ghost there. Comes with a dial to, well, basically just make clicking sounds, really. Uh, but there you go, part of the kit. Now, what else have I got? Now, this is interesting. This is interesting. Ghostbusters 2 came out. Um, where do I stand on Ghostbusters 2? It's all right. It was just a bit of a letdown, considering all they do is recycle the plot of the first one and cleverly swap out the Marshmallow Man for a giant Statue of Liberty. Clever, Dan. Clever. It's a completely original idea. So, when the film came out, the only real bit of new kit that the film had to show off was this. It was the Slime Blower. This came out in 1989, maybe 1990. Uh, hard to get. I remember, I think my mum got this in some kind of home bargain style toy shop or toy section. Um, it's not even as interesting to look at. It's, it's, first of all, it's pink because the slime was pink in Ghostbusters 2, so obviously that's why. Um, stuck the logo on. I don't believe that logo featured on the slime boa in the movie. Not at all. It was a nice kind of grey with a kind of green finish to the side. But the best part about this is not so much the this, because it's just a it's just a tube of plastic. The best part is the gun that comes with it. Oh why? Why is it so good? Because it doesn't look all that much. Handle pops out, but there's the best part. If you want the slime to pop out, you just go. And it looks like a jack well, yeah, you know what it looks like. Let's just say it. Cock. Um, very popular with single mothers, I believe, this one. So there you go. Uh, pink slime blower. All the fun of the fair. Keeps your mum company in the middle of the night. I thank you. So there we go. Right, what else have we got? Marshmallow Man. Obviously, every kid who had the firehouse and the toys had to have the Marshmallow Man. My Ecto-1 is currently in storage back at home. So I can't show you that right now. Slimer or Onion Ghost or Onion Head as he's named in the film only really called Slimer for the cartoon series and subsequent franchisation of the film um, came with pizza some meat watermelon quite a nice little mould actually that when you think about it you can't really do anything with it it doesn't really stand on a flat surface but that's fine why is everything to do with Ghostbusters so sexual it's a very good point it's a very good point. A comedian friend of mine, Richard Sandling, has the point of saying, basically, if you think about it, Ghostbusters is a giant gay subtext film because at the end it involves four men touching wands and making a sailor explode white sticky goo all over New York. So, you know, you know, there you go. Uh, I'm glad Eli's not here, by the way, because if he was, he'd ruin my fun. And I'm enjoying this because I have nothing else to do tonight. Uh, Eli will definitely get him to do a noodle version of a live stream once we can get together. I promise you we'll do noodles live which is a horrible thought, but we'll get on to that. Promise you. Noodle live stream. So, um, here we go. This was in good condition until I started putting it in packaging, but there we go. A nice little Johnny Lightning Ghostbusters Ecto-1. Actually, this is probably this is Ghostbusters 2, in fact. Wow, I've never twigged that until right now that this is Ghostbusters 2. <laughs> even though the logo's on there, obviously, even though it's got the... Uh, the uh, signage at the top and the new kit and the and the and the warning stripes, but um, there we go. I love that. What's on the back? Johnny Lightning is the leader manufacturer of Di oh, whatever, mate. Whatever's. You know Hot Wheels and you know it. So let's have a look at my little box. Ah, here we go. Now again, I if I'd known the future, I would have kept all of this in better nick. I'm surprised it's in as good as nick as it is, but. Oh, the master's been here, I see. Uh, let's have a little look, see. Ooh, what's this? Have you seen this drug dealer? <laughs> uh, okay, so. Action figures. Egon, we've all seen him. Again, reasonably good nick still. Uh, interesting thing about um, Egon, the only reason he has 
blonde hair in the cartoon series is because when they animated them based on the TV show, uh, on the film, sorry, uh, they're all just white blokes of brown hair, so they had to differentiate themselves. So hence the blonde hair, hence the multicolored uh, jumpsuits to give them a bit of a, you know, so they all st stood out as characters. So there's Egon, bless him, voiced by, um, it is Larish, Maurice Lamarche. Oh, I knew I'd forget that name. Paul is secretly a drug dealer. Not so secretly, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> uh, what else? That's not Ghostbusters. Wow. Little Starbug. Oh, Red Dwarf reference. Excellent. Oh, this is my favourite Ghostbusters character. The packaging, please remove, pull off, do not unscrew action figure. Uh, this was in Ghostbusters, the real Ghostbusters, season three. Uh, very interesting. Uh, lost episode. A few cells went missing, but this was a major villain at the time. Uh, there we go. So, Winston, again, interesting fact about Winston in the cartoon series, uh, Ernie Hudson uh, auditioned for the role, didn't get it, didn't get the role he played in the film, so our uh, senior hall played him in the first few seasons, uh, there we go, yes, this will be uploaded, this will probably go uploaded just as soon uh, as this stops being live, who else, Peter Venkman, the, the mouth of the group, that's what they always say, isn't it? There was a Bible written for the animated series. So he was always thought of as the mouth, obviously the brains. He was more the muscle. They kind of made his character much more of a kind of handyman uh, with, I believe, a uh, military background. Although that's a bit fuzzy. I'm not quite sure if that's true or not. Who else do we have in my little Ghostbusters box? Ray. Do you reckon Dan Aykroyd was ever a little bit pissed off? He was made to look paunchy the cartoon series also voiced by fred from scooby-doo i don't know anyway he gets to retain oh look at that quiche there oh yeah um lovely so all of them came with a proton pack actually not badly modeled actually when you think about it it looks not too dissimilar to what we've got there you know, it's got the basic gist of it. If I was ever going to get a life-size proton pack made, I'd actually probably want a giant version of that. Uh, that's where I'm thinking at the moment. That and the reboot proton pack, I would love to get my hands on. Aesthetically, I really liked the reboot proton pack. Uh, as you can imagine, broke off. There are a few in here that have their ones still attached, but there was never the most clever idea to just have a big flimsy piece of thin plastic at the end of the gun going a wibbly wobbly. But... When Ghostbusters 2 came out, obviously they went with the slime blower colour for that. And this came with this character. Lewis Tully. Oh, because when Ghostbusters 2 came out, they added this character to the cartoon series. Uh, only a few episodes. Obviously teamed them up with uh, Janine for love interest purposes. Interesting about this figure is that if you pour cold water on it, you can just about see it there. But if you pour cold water on him, um, it kind of uh, turns green or pink. It makes it look like he's slimed everywhere upon his chest, face, neck and chest. And finally, Janine, because they only really released Janine as, as, a, as a fright figure. So when you raise her hand up, oh, her eyes and hair pop up. I hated those figures, but I wanted to get Janine. So I, what does that say? Oh, Columbia. Um, so I got Janine just so I could, really. I got this figure just so I could have her in my collection. Uh, what else is in there? I don't think it's much. Okay, anyone know what this is from? I've long since forgotten. If anyone knows, please um, don't bother telling me. I'm not all that interested. I'll look into that later. Oh, what's, what's it say? What does it say? I can't see. Eyesight room. Red Dwarf. All right, so that's in that box with a TARDIS. And a Dalek. So there you go. Right, so with that in mind, what else have we got in my box of crap? Okay, let's have a look at this one. Apologies if you're just seeing a lot of swirly stuff right now. Okay, so I have another box. I have quite a few boxes of Ghostbusters stuff. This might be a two-parter, ladies and gentlemen. This might be a two-parter. This is already 14 minutes. So... Uh, I went to see the reboot when it came out uh, as part of a special uh, multimedia screening. There we go. I got told off by Sony because I put a picture of this up online when I shouldn't have. So I had to take it down because they won't get told off. Admit one. But I did get to have a lovely smug picture of myself 
<laughs> against Ecto-1. Oh, look at me all happy and smug because I've seen the new Ghostbusters movie. So there you go. That was almost this time last year, I believe. Monster in my pocket? Maybe. Is there a box where Ganon keeps the screaming souls of his enemies? Yes, there is. Another video. Uh, so I got a bunch of stuff as a result. Uh, the author, Andrew Schaefer, um, sent me two copies of his book, Ghosts from Our Past, which was featured in the, uh, in the movie. This is obviously a um, spoof book that um, Abby and Erin write in the movie. Uh, I love this book. If you're actually a fan of ghost hunting in general, you might learn a little bit or two, even though it's got some character background and stuff like that. It does actually go into uh, types of ghosts. It goes into ghost hunters themselves. There's a lot of good stuff in this book, actually. Really good stuff. It's well worth checking out. Um, so I have two copies of that. And look, um, he, Andrew even drew me a little picture of Rowan. So yeah, love that stuff. Excellent. What else do I have? Oh, embargo agreement. I had to get that. I'd never. This is a thing in America. High C Ecto Cooler, huge thing. So when I finally got my hands on a tin of this, thanks to a guy called Dan Curley who helped bring it back in the first place. Um, yes, my dream job is being a Ghostbuster Laura. Actually, if you check out the um, our channel, you can see my solo show or a forty-minute version of my solo show where I talk about being a ghost hunter and going around the UK catching ghosts. Well, you say catching ghosts, sitting in the dark for hours on end and seeing nothing. But that's my solo show. You can check it out. It's called A Real Ghostbuster. This drink tastes like the can of orange squash you got at a sports day. So if you ever had that, that's what Ecto Cooler tastes like. It's all right. If you have it with the vodka, even lovelier. Uh, yes, bring me some back from the USA. I would love that. I need to stock up because I think, I think they've stopped making it now. What else do I got? Stole those glasses from the 3D viewing of Ghostbusters. I liked it. It was great. Um, what else have I got now? So I tend to collect what I can. I don't tend to like everything. I know there are some collectors who get everything, but I just like getting magazines. I like getting the books. I like getting the, the bric-a-brac more than the actual merchandise. I could never really afford my own proton pack, really, sadly. I don't know what's in this. Let's have a little look at what's in this envelope, shall we, right now? Come on, stay still, stay still. Oh, what's all this, Gubbins? This is interesting. Oh. All right, let's do this one at a time. This is gonna be a two-parter, I think, because I think 17 minutes is more than enough of me wanking over my Ghostbusters collection. But I went to Florida, Universal Studios Florida, where they had the Ghostbusters attraction for a little while. They basically recreate the end of the movie with some bad actors and bad dubbing, but it was cute. You got to see Slimer. You got to see what looks like actually the killer clown from the movies, killer clown from outer space. They must have nicked it from the Chodo brothers. Giant Marshmallow Man appears at the end. Pretty good show for me, seeing it as a kid. It just It was dreamlike. So yeah, Gubbins, very English word, and I'm sticking to it. I'm keeping that. Please no wanking, vinegar strokes. Okay, TMI. This I got in 1984. It is still in amazingly good nick, considering, considering uh, how old it, this must be. It's like 30-odd years now. Um, 75p bought it at the cinema I eventually saw the movie at in Hoylake in the Wirral in the UK uh, fantastic competition inside albums and singles to be won it's just a little magazine you don't get this these days really you go see a movie and you just don't get uh, magazines or anything like that to go with it it's just all blur but full of some interesting facts about the making of the movie it's lineage it's all all those kind of things what else is in here I've got to be very careful so then there's loads of lovely stuff in this Look at that! Look at that win! The first 20 entrants with the highest score will each receive a Ghostbusters album. The next 20 will receive a pop-up single plus Day Glow No Ghost stickers. Interesting fact about the logo. I didn't know until recently. So, everyone knows the logo in that direction, right? That's how I prefer it as well. However, officially speaking, it's meant to look that way because in America there's something I can't remember exactly what it was but Michael C. Gross who designed the No Ghost logo um, designed it on the British No Entry symbol which is this orientation so when it was released in the UK that's the version of the Ghostbusters logo we all saw so it's officially correct however mostly we're used to the branding facing the other way so there you go little Ghostbusters factoid for you there what else have I got 
Another good edition of Starburst when Ghostbusters 2 was released and a little movie starring Megan J. Fox. Uh, you know, £1.50. Pike fishing. Okay. Slug baiting. What? Hang on, is this Starburst or Fishers Monthly? Jeebus crisps. Trying to keep the fucking swearing down. Oh, there's a review of Ghostbusters 2 in here. What do they say? Ghostbusters 2 manages to top the previous Marshmallow Man finale with a great gag involving the Statue of Liberty. Otherwise, it's the same old likeable high spirit silliness. Needing nil effort to watch or enjoy. Five. I presume five's good then. Presume five's good then. Um, there we go. Slime River. Return of the Ghostbusters. Uh, interesting factoid for you. There's a lot of stuff with uh, Lewis Tully cut out. Where he's trying to catch Slimer and form a bond, which leads to the scene on the bus towards the end of the film. Mostly cut out. Why? Bo Murray didn't like it because he said it made uh, Rick Moranis look funnier than Bill Murray. So allegedly, allegedly, Bill Murray asked for those scenes to be cut. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's the story I heard from a very reputable source. Another starburst earlier. Um, I have a poor connection. I do apologise if you're seeing stuttering. Um... Uh, Making of Starburst again. Let's have a little look at this. Oh, that's a lovely image. That's actually really nice. By Randy and Jean Marc Lofficier. Lof Lofficier, yeah. And seriously, the thing is, Ghostbusters, such a beautifully made movie. Ivan Reitman's not really known for his visual, you know, composition, his shots, but he really pulls it out of the bag. Um, for Ghostbusters. It's really an eye-catching and beautifully made film. I said the only real drawback to me is that Winston gets short shrift. There's a very famous shot, a low pan, uh, when you see the building get struck by lightning and the Ghostbusters are seeing Dana's building just before the end sequence and the camera's a low pan, slightly Dutch angled, swoops up towards the three main heroes. Winston's in the back and I'm thinking, what a waste of a great hero shot. Ugh. Actually, there's quite a lot of Ghostbusters stuff in here. I'm going to have to reread this and see if there's anything I'm missing. A great shot of uh, Bill Murray there. Goza, voiced by Ivan Reitman, because the actress didn't have a very good voice. Same thing happened to Vigo in Ghostbusters 2. Had to revoice him with uh, the guy who was in The Exorcist. I can't remember his name right now. But the actor who played Vigo, very nasty man, apparently. Um, interesting article on, I think, io9, if you want to check it out. Looking Magazine. In the UK, Looking Magazine was a kids' magazine for shows on the ITV network, the commercial network, opposed to the BBC. Um, this was obviously when the cartoon series was coming out. Um, yes, I do want a cheap proton pack. Yes. Yes, do that, Dad. I want it. I want it now. Um, <laughs> within budgetary reasons. So when the cartoon series came out, they made a big deal of it. And this is a really nice little image. And what's interesting as well... Brown hair, slightly strawberry blonde. You know, I, I love this piece of art. If I could have a poster of that framed, I would. Um, Weetabix when they had characters. Let's see where we go, number 73. Uh, me and Stuart did a video all about uh, looking magazines. That'll be coming out in the near future, by the way, where we go into much more detail. So the cartoon series came out and that, and that's it. Now, can you spot the error, which even as a child pissed me off? Let me see if you can have a guess what the problem is. Yeah, I, I guess saying do it, Dad, I want it, I want it now is really uh, upsetting. And out of context, I apologise if anyone has sampled that and turned it into a sex rave song. Uh, no, no, that is not the face to go with Peter Venkman. No, 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 Ray Stance does not have that face. Thank God they didn't mix that up. But... There you go, meet the Ghostbusters. Nice article. And for some reason, in the middle, Sinclair advert. They could have put a poster in there. What a waste of time. All right, we're going to wrap this up because guess what? I have another big box of Ghostbusters stuff. <laughs> we're going to do this another time, I think. But for now, this is the Lego box for my firehouse. And all you need to know is there's a lot more stuff in there. A lot more valuable and very rare stuff in there as well. But to finish off, to have a quick look. This all came with the Ghostbusters um, Ghost of the Past book, little business cards, Anthony. Um, there's the Chinese restaurant that they uh, hold up in in the first part of the film. Kemp Spectral Field Guide. I guess that's the um, Tobin Spirit Guide for the modern generation. 
Uh, introduction to Ritual Summoning. Oh, that's really nice. These are little postcards that came with the book. High Sky to Rightful Entities. And oh, that's all really nice. Okay, that's from his other book, that's from his other book, and that's from his other book. Not interested. But there's the single on vinyl, kids. Oh, vinyl. Do you remember that? Little plastic discs that used to play music. I'm still more fascinated with vinyl than I ever am for an MP3 download. Beautiful thing. The blockbusting theme from the Ghostbusting movie. And the B-side just has the song on, but longer. Here we go. And obviously Ghostbusters 2 came out. And Bobby Brown got on it, so obviously I got the single version of that as well on our own. So, so, all right, Ghostbusters Tap Part 1, all done. If you have any further questions or opinions, keep them to yourself. This is not a two-way system. I am not interested in your theories. I, oh, okay, I will end on this then. I will end on this. If there's one thing I love, if you want to get into my good books, there's one thing I love. It's badges. I really do love it. So... In this tin is some of my favourite Ghostbusters badges, peripheral, I don't know what you want to call it. Let's have a little look-see. Ha let me just squeeze that there, we we'll do this. Uh, uh, oh, God. Uh, okay, uh, it's not coming off. I'm pulling hard. It's not coming off in my hand. Oh, uh, it's come all over. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so in this little tin, uh, a girlfriend once got me this. It is a Ghostbusters Zippo lighter. Not bad, actually. I mean, it's not an official Zippo. Not at all. But she got it engraved for me. I love it. Oh, what? I was going to say, I'd be surprised if that sparked up. But there you go. Little lighter. Um, went to Universal Studios where I got that from. And got this little Ghostbusters pin badge. Again, nice enough. Lovely. You know, it's a lovely little pin badge. I love enamel badges. One of the things I want to do for Cheap Show, by the way, is I want to make Cheap Show enamel badges with the little coffee stain logo in the name. That would be quite nice. Um, Ghostbusters 2 badge. Again, lovely. I love the detailing on this. The TM ruins it to some extent, but it's really quite nice. Is that going to focus? Uh, I'm being too shaky, shaky. But I love that. I love it. Such, and the thing, just interesting thing as well, I once made a Ghostbusters 2 clock in school when I was little boy. Uh, that's somewhere. Where is that? Oh, I don't know. But that's somewhere. Maybe in the second box. I'll get that out later. I'm very proud of that clock. Um, uh, when Ghost Call was formed for the reboot in the Ghostbusters universe of films and cartoons and TV series, they very kindly sent me a Ghost Call cadet badge because I wasn't part of a franchise. If you're part of a Ghostbusters franchise, you've got a whole kit. But Eric, who helps run Ghost Call in LA, he sent me uh, a Ghost Call badge, a cadet badge. Just to keep me in the loop. And I really appreciate that. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And finally. Is it finally? It's a TARDIS badge. Here's my favourite Ghostbusters badge of all time. Now, there's an interesting story behind this. I had this badge since mid-80s. Um, lost it. It broke my heart. And then randomly, again, when I was going through all these boxes, wrapped in some books, wrapped in a sock, wrapped in God knows what it was, this fell out. This is my proper lush Ghostbusters logo badge. And I don't know if you can quite see it. I'm going to have to, if I can tap it. But the detail and the finish of it is just beautiful. You can't quite see because of the focus on the camera. But underneath the see-through red, I don't know, enamel coating, it's kind of like a shiny, glittery underneath. And I love it so much. It's so sparkly. And I used to wear it all the time until I nearly lost it again. So I thought, you know what? I don't want to lose this ever again. So I'm going to keep that in my little tin of dreams. So there you go. I love my Ghostbusters badge. I love it so much. I don't know if it's worth a billion pounds. I could probably sell it on eBay, but that ain't going to happen, yo. It's not going to happen. So there you go. That's part one of my Ghostbusters tap box. I would do more, but I think... I think 29 minutes is enough. Look, there you go, Ghostbusters Blu-rays. I have so many DVDs. Let's have a little peek in here. <gasps> What's all this? What's all this? What is all this? Well, you will find, oh, okay. Here's my Ghostbusters clock. <laughs> hey, 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 I made this <laughs> in school out of wood. In, God knows, 1993. 
three, Christ knows when, but I made that myself and it is the best thing I've ever done ever in my life, ever. Fact. I peaked way too early with my craftsman skills. So I made that. Laura, I do not have a Ghostbusters tattoo. That is something I will definitely get one day in the future. But I'll tell you, in there, some very interesting Ghostbusters stuff. Books, magazines, rarities. That's all for another video. And until then, I'm going to clear this mess up. So thank you for joining me. If you don't know what Cheap Show is, I don't know why you'd be watching this. But, uh, yes, friend builds 3D printed proton packs. Uh... I would love to get a cheaper one. Right now, my finances are uh, non-existent, but bank it. I'll, I'll be interested um, in in that going forward. I do want a proton pack so much because I have a I have a Ghostbusters uniform, which I'll show in the next video that I made for my solo show. Doesn't fit now, and I'll wear it to prove the point later. But if you're following Cheap Show, just so you know, tomorrow the new episode goes out the live one taken at MCM Comic Con. If you're watching this in the future, then it's already up online. Um, interesting show. I think we basically gave no fucks. <laughs> so that's going up tomorrow. Uh, if you like and support Cheap Show, please go to patreon.com. Uh, forward slash cheap show and donate as little as you want or as much as you want uh, we're going to start rolling out the Patreon uh, tier awards throughout June so uh, stay in touch and you'll hear from us in the next week or two we're sorting that out as we go other than that thank you very much keep following us on Twitter at the cheap show pod uh, email us with any queries or questions or advice or you know if you're lonely <laughs> the cheap show at gmail.com and uh, that's it um uh, can we expect more dollop content in future cheap shows? I quite enjoy that. Yeah, if we can ever find a reason to do a story like the one we did at the Collier's Mansion or the one we did about um, John Meggett, we will do it. But we're not just going to do it for the hell of it. We do want it to keep it cheap show themed. So I think that's it for now. Um, I'll sign off by saying thank you very much for watching. Uh, it's really hot in here today and I've got a sweat on and uh, I look like shit. And on that note, thank you very much for watching. Keep supporting Cheap Show. We love it. We adore it. Um, keep on watching Barshans as well. New episodes every Friday. Uh, three episodes of Cheap Show as well. Now a month. Uh, we've got two in the bag and one of them is really good. I mean, they're both good, but one of them. Oh, if you thought the uh, Bean Boozled challenge was bad. Oh, we've got something worse. Genuinely worse. That even Eli's face pulled up like a dog's bottom when he ate it. So... Thank you again. I do the worst sign off. Have you noticed that? Thank you very much. I've been Paul Gannon. This is Cheap Show Livestream Tap Viewing. Thank you very much. Thank you to all 26 of you who have watched and share the love. Thank you very much. A tatty bye. Okay, finish.